G'day and welcome to another big edition of the MCDFNL Netball Show. And uh, thanks to McDonald's, we're pumping up a big final series. We've had week one, it's done and dusted. We're rolling off week two. My name's Andy, I'm joined by Kim Bailey. And what a big weekend we had uh, in the first week of finals. Yep, some absolutely cracking games, Andy. Mm. Stealing your oh. your word. Um, I'll, I'll charge for that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, look, there was... Some of the margins did blow it a little bit, but uh, from what I'm hearing, they're all good games. But look at that first game, that first limit of nation final at Hedges. One goal. One goal in it. We saw Carrisbrook 34 defeating Natty 36. Yeah, what a contest that certainly was. Great effort there by Carrisbrook and uh, Natty be able to, to, to be able to go toe-to-toe in that one there. Fantastic performance. And, and that's uh, that's a good feel of what finals atmosphere is all about. Yeah, Natty, Natty held um, a one-goal lead going into half-time, and, and at three-quarter time, it was all... It was all um, it was all a draw. It was all tied up. So that last quarter was extraordinary. It went goal for goal. But Carisbrook, at the right time, got the goal, and it was um, a one-goal victory to them. And, um, you know, Sheridan Burns, she's just had a, a, an amazing season. Emma Roth played um, a great game as well. And um, Elise Mottram, who, who, again, they've just been fantastic, all of these girls, and they've just put together the game when it needed to be. The young team from Natty, they've most probably been on a little bit of the rebuild as well. Abby Parker um, shot the majority of the girls. She had a great game, 32 mm. from um, 44 goals. So she did the majority of the shooting, which is really hard for one player. You know how I feel about this, Chris. One mm. player having to, to do the whole load of, of the shooting is really hard. But great game. Congratulations to Carisbrook. You know, I know, um, I think... Trentham knocked them over in the last round, maybe. Yeah. And that might have deflated them a little bit, but I still think they're a pretty good team and they can do some damage. Well, they're into the final six now, so they'll be uh, yep. cru- cru- cruising. I think the uh, the next elimination final is historic in a sense because we, uh, we've seen the uh, the Empire of Navarre uh, come down. Uh, we won't be seeing them in grand final action. Not this year. Not and, this year. They'll get some players back next year, maybe. But um, We predicted this result. I mean, we weren't yeah. too surprised. These two yeah, faced we off. Did. And we're talking about Avoca here. They faced off in the last round of home and away season. Navarre needed to win to, to, to seal their spot in the top eight. But we, we sort of discussed last week, Avoca probably would have learned a few things on that to then also yeah, bounce back. Yeah, I think so. Maddie Egan has been sensational this year. And my understanding is she had a really good game. And she opened up the circle. So she came off the, um, off the transverse line, off the back line, and opened up the back space that we had Stacey Blair could could drive into and they exploited that a lot so that worked in their favour. Caitlin Drummond was fantastic um, but as I said Stacey Blair really ripped that um, baseline drive apart. Um, I think Taylor Egan had to, sorry Taylor Egan sorry, uh, Taylor Mason yeah. um, <laughs> dropped back uh, into defence uh, to try and stop that but um, yeah, but most probably was too late that time. And it's great to see Mia Jens. Um, mm. She's been a consistent best player for Navarre now. Um, she's had a fantastic season, still an under-17 player, voted really well uh, in the midcourt. And, you know, I, I love that Navarre have had a ch- changing of the guard, but they've still brought the young kids in, and their future, no doubt, will still look really rosy. No doubt there. And uh, speaking of Mia Jens, a big congratulations to her, taking out the under-17 best and fairest as well. A fantastic yep. achievement for her. And uh, for a girl to be able to have such a dominant impact at junior level and then to follow it up at senior level is extraordinary. Yeah, look, and she had, I think she won the medal in... Um, at Interleague as well. So a great young player, you know, big future for her. Yeah, definitely right. Looking very rosy there at uh, Navarre, despite their elimination. As we talk up the next game, uh, Trentham over the qualifying final action, defeated Harcourt by 20 goals, 55 to 35. Yeah, big win for Trentham, but um, yeah, look, they've been the quality team all year. Um, great game from them. They just uh, opened it up most probably. It was still pretty close. It was six goals of difference at half time, but after that they just went bang and had a, I think it was a 15 goal second half, a second quarter to a 10 and then had a uh, another 16 to seven last quarter. So that last quarter they really put their foot down. If teams can do that, that's a great effort. But yeah, strength all over the court and it's no surprise. But you know, um, Harcourt, they're still in with a shot. A great game this week. So we see um, Rovers and Trentham get the rest this week and go straight into the prelim. Exactly. And Rovers uh, had a hard-fought win over Lexton. And uh, again, we're talking about the quality of uh, finals atmosphere. We saw it here with Rovers 35 defeating Lexton, 32 by three goals in a really good game. Uh, and, and, and hats off there to, uh, to Lexton because that was shot at halftime and then they, uh, they were in front of three-quarter time with 14 <laughs> goals to five. Six goals down at halftime and they've um, yeah put the foot down and mowed it along and... You know, yeah, so, and that's what that third quarter, 
what is it, Chris? The, the Premiership, the premiership quarter. quarter. That's correct. So um, yeah, they they sort of bounced back after that. Um, Heather Tweedle had another good game for them for Lexton, um, and she's been great this year. Uh, Caitlin Howell also. Um, Maddie Davies is just a superstar, though. You know, she's she's um, most probably pivotal to the success of Rovers, and you know, she just rips the court apart in goal defence every week. So Jackie Featherston also is great, and. Nanice, I think it is. Mm. I'm not going to pronounce that last name. Uh, well, she did feature in our, um, our multicultural uh, edition of the record okay. uh, earlier on this year. Fantastic player that's uh, come up her first season at the Maryborough Rovers and had a, an outstanding yeah, season. Yeah, and like she shot at 67%. So the percentages were a little bit down. I think this was a Sunday game. Was this the Saturday? Sorry, this was the Saturday game. Wasn't that awful weather that we saw around the state? Um, but, you know, Rovers, you know, I most probably underestimated them a little bit, I think. They, so, they yeah. can certainly cause some yeah, damage. Yeah, they can. And they've, they got, have. they've got that uh, preliminary final berth all sealed up. As we turn our attention to uh, to this week's games, we've got Harcourt versus Avoca on Sunday after. Uh, sorry, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, good game. Uh, do you know what? I've I stuck with Harcourt most of the season, but I'm going to switch. I'm going to Avoca. I think their fighting win that they've they've done. I think they're they're in for it. I think they're going. I, I like the look of their team. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was going to go for a point of difference, but I, I just don't know with with Harcourt. I think they they battled Trenton well last week, but Avoca are showing some great form at yeah, the right they time are. of year. Yeah, so, so they, they are looking good, and I, I'm we're with green you. for once. We are, we are. <laughs> I just think they're going to be the the sleepers of the competition. You knock out a team like Navarre, yeah, they may not be as strong as that or they've been in the past, but you yeah. have to you have to be a really good side to be able to do something yeah. like that. Yep. So, uh, and Lexington versus Carisbrook on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, uh, another one. Geez, they're hard games to pick, aren't they? Because yeah, everyone's just been so be. good. It is, yeah. Look, I think Maddie Davis has just been too good all over the court at the moment. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go stick with um, Maddie Davis. What am I talking about? Wrong team. Wrong team. <laughs> um, I think they've just been too too strong all over the court, Lexton. And Sarah Fish has been a, a really key to this team as well, just the, her ball efficiency in, in the midcourt. Um, and they've got some really good players too, Abby Brown. Be a really good matchup down there, but I'm going, um, I'm going Lexton. Lexton, like so I'm going to go on Carisbrook. I think to win that important final last week against Natty Bial with a finals pressure, uh, and Lexton, on the other hand, couldn't get the job done. We will done. see. We will see. We will go toe to toe and see who will get this job done and who has another bit more fight left in their home and away, or sorry, their finals campaign. Kim, thanks so much for joining us this week for the show. We look forward to uh, the counting down to preliminary final action next week. It's exciting.